I want to make sure I get this right. According to my my research on you, it uh, it appears you are black. Um, I identify as such. Okay, thing. okay. And I know there's some question over the gender, but sure. My question, and I want your opinion on this as someone coming from the outside, mm -hmm. is I'd be curious to take, get your take on how racist America, in fact, is. Not very. And yet, certainly watching the U.S. media, and I believe to some degree European media, you would get this impression in the media that they're, in fact, worse than they've ever been. Sure. Uh, was that, is that your impression from the media in England or no? Am I overplaying? Well, it, the UK, they do do some of the same stuff, right? And I'd argue in both countries, there are a lot of people out there who want to make it a bigger issue than it is in reality, right? It's almost getting to the place where, um, you know, to, co to quote one of my friends, the, the demand for racism is higher than the supply, mm -hmm. okay? So people are trying to find it in every nook and cranny even when it may literally not be there, right? People are trying to read into, people are almost trying to invent new subcategories of things that can be considered racist or offensive or, or sexist or homophobic, any of these isms, obvious, right? People are trying to find it where it's not even there, right? When someone says something like racism is endemic to foundational to I'm like, what? You're, you're just talking nonsense to me, right? If you wanted to say that tribalism is endemic to the human species, I'd be like, okay, yeah, I'd agree with you on that one, right? You're along lots of different lines, mm -hmm. as you've already alluded to when you were talking about Ukraine, or if you go to various parts of Africa or South America, like anywhere, right? You can have people who, to an outsider, look the same. Mm -hmm. So human beings certainly have some desire to create in groups and, and out groups. Absolutely. Right? So I don't I don't doubt that. But if you're just talking about I mean I, I'm I almost get tired of talking about racism because I I feel like I'm talking about something that's not a huge issue. It's like look when it rises up then ninety nine point nine percent of people don't support it, right? The the issue to me would be if say if there were an isolated racist incident that happened. If society as a whole was just like, oh, we'll just let that slide, then that would be that would be a concern. So I'm not saying that individual incidents do not occur, or you don't get individual racist people or sexist people or bigoted people in, in any any way, shape, or form. That absolutely exists. I will never say that racism is not a thing. I will never say sexism is not a thing. Homophobic, any any of these things, I would never say it's not a thing. But it's one thing saying it exists, and it's another thing saying that society as a whole is that because that suggests that huge swathes perhaps the majority of society is cool with it mm -hmm. almost everybody would condemn that absolutely regardless of their political orientation and be like that is horrible those people need to be to be found caught punished so on and so forth right there was a time when people would be like mm, you know kind of turn a blind eye to it or say mm -hmm. oh maybe maybe that person deserved it because i don't right that 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 that's historically and there are a lot of places in the world right now where, where, that, where that does happen yeah where yeah. that where that's still the case but that's that's no longer the case so to me to say that society is racist to me that's one it's just not true two it's divisive and three it's kind of like a, a slap in the face to all the progress that's been made and to and to how decent almost everybody actually truly is, right? Because by saying that, you're, you're talking about everybody, right? If you're, if you're, we are society, right? Society is made up of, of all of us individuals. So if someone comes and says, oh, society is this, it's like, well, no, like, I'm not that. He's not that. She's well, not that. I would that, agree so. largely in the West, yes. Yeah. I, I genuinely do think I have been to other places where, where no, it's, it's where pretty, it's yeah, gone, sure, going yeah. right now. But th that's why I'm saying it's, it's so ridiculous that these conversations are happening in the, in the least racist yeah. places at the least racist time period historically. Again, this is coming back to the very beginning of our conversation, talking about perspective, mm -hmm. right? When people say these things, I'm like, what on earth are you comparing to? Like what, what you know, I wrote a tweet a while back and I said that uh, racism in the Western world is at an all time low. People got angry at me. It's like, what are your statistics? What is it? I'm like, tell me which decade 
-hmm. in the USA. Well, you want to go out to the 20s, the 30s? Well, and as far as I can tell like, from the statistics that are out there, yeah, I, yeah. it supports that too. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you literally, people were being enslaved for a while. And then you had literal laws on the books that encouraged, promoted discrimination against, like, this, this is all gone, right? Mm -hmm. Like, where, if not 2019, what, when, when was, when was it better? Mm -hmm. Is this saying everything is perfect and you've totally eliminated something? No, it's not. It's saying it's at an all-time low. I'm someone who tries to compare everything to history and to the rest of the world, okay? Not to utopia. Whereas you have people who compare everything to utopia. So right. it's like, oh, well, it, you know, in my perfect utopia in my brain, it doesn't exist this at thing all. doesn't yeah. exist at all, right? Yeah. So if, if it would be, I don't know, it takes something that everyone would like to not exist, crime, mm -hmm. okay? So if someone is like, oh, the, uh, I don't know, this city is dangerous. X amount of crime happened there last year, right? If that X is lower than 99% of places in the world mm -hmm. and lower than it was all the previous years, then that's not saying that crime does not exist there, but, but, you, but you'd, be, you'd be like, well, relatively, it's actually safe. Mm -hmm. yep. again, no, it's not safe. Someone got, someone got mugged there yesterday, but it's like, yeah, but in the grand scheme of well, things. Well, I'm curious. You, you said, yeah. you know, you, you said that you said, you said what you said on Twitter about mm. race and racism being uh, reasonably low at the moment. Mm -hmm. And you said you got a lot of pushback on that. Mm. Uh, roughly, uh, could you give us a summary of generally some of the pushback and what you, what you think was behind it or the kind of thinking that was behind it? I'm just curious. Oh, pe people want to be victims, man. People want to find problems. People want to point fingers outwards rather than ever looking inwards, right? As long as you can blame things on other things, on other people, whether real or imagined, then it gives people an easy excuse to, for their own failings or for their own lack of activity or for their own effort, right? If, yep. if, if I just want to, I could, I could just sit back and complain and say, oh, you know what, like I'm not even... The reason for anything that's happened bad to me or anything I, I want to do or achieve that I haven't done is because of some arbitrary uh, trait, immutable characteristic that I may have, right? Maybe then that's, that's kind of an easy way for me to live my life because I'm going to say, well, the system is rigged against me, right? Right. Um, you know, people want to be a victim. Mm. I love it. Um, here, here's another quote, hopefully by you. Okay. Or maybe I was just in the Z's. Um, not to play identity politics, he wrote, but why are so many white liberal American women so infuriatingly, annoyingly <laughs> self-righteous? Did I write that? I well, we'll have to fact check. Uh, <laughs> but um, I don't actually remember. Uh, that. Well, I've got a date, November twenty yeah. first. So I, I think I was right on this one. Well, 20, um, 2018? Yes. Oh, fair and, enough. And okay. so, um, and so, my question there is, it's true. That, that's probably why well, it's true. <laughs> um, but the the um, the issue there is like, well, that's someone who they. You hit, you hit on. It's not just people want to be victims, but mm. it's like they want. And, you know, the annoying white women, <laughs> they're not the victims per se, but yeah. they're kind of like, ah, mm -hmm. what about those victims? Mm. What, now, how does that come in? Is that, and this gets into the whole concept of virtue signaling oh, and uh, my theory mm -hmm. on this, and I may have had an aneurysm, but I think this may touch on the whole religious aspect of uh, because people are not as visible about going to church mm -hmm. and praying, for mm -hmm. example, and making their uh, righteousness known visibly to the community, mm -hmm. uh, I think this has sort of filled in for that. Is that why you have so many white folks who seem to be so upset about other people's problems and need, uh, I don't know, does yeah. any of that make sense? Or yeah, yeah, it, it does. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to target it at any uh, any demographic. Yeah, we can say plaid people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, there are certain people who, you know, again, like to be offended on other people's behalf, even when those people who they may think are being targeted aren't actually being mm -hmm. targeted, or this, this problem's not a real thing, right? It's a, like you said, you know, it's 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 this 
desire to be seen as some kind of virtuous person or some kind of hero or you know someone who's standing up to the oppressor which you know in a case where you have got a genuine real oppressor then sure yeah it's brave and courageous and necessary to have people who who stand up to that but with a lot of people it's it's imagined right it's in their head it's for it's for feel good points that's why it's called that's why people call it virtue signaling because mm -hmm. it's like you know okay this isn't someone who's actually being virtuous or who's going out on a limb or who's taking some kind of big risk or something here it's just someone who wants to be seen wants to be perceived by their peers maybe in their immediate social circle as being more virtuous hey look at me like i and I, why you know, other than getting attention like why, male what, what is what is the value of that what do you i mean you don't get money out of it well, it's, so. it's social, social points and okay. also it it immunizes you from the uh from the uh, circular firing squad. Interesting. Right? Okay. So if, if people are part of this super woke cancel culture, it, mm -hmm. it, it's like if I can throw someone under the bus before, right? If, if I can show that I'm the wokest of the woke, right? I'm the ultimate social just, justice warrior. They'll come for me last. Okay. And these, I think these people are starting to recognize that it is a circular firing squad, right? Everybody's going to get shot eventually. Everyone's going to get canceled. So they want to be the last person in the game surely they don't think that surely they're not even on their subconscious they're mm. not like okay i need to make sure i appear good so they don't come for me i mean what is their higher what is their more sort of top level what look I, I i think for, i think for most people i don't think for everybody but i think think, think for most people most behaviors and things stem from what is a good place at least to that person's brain right their, their whole thing could be miscalibrated and they're doing a lot of wrong or even a lot of evil thinking that they're doing good right i don't think a lot of people get up in the morning and think okay i want to make yeah. the world a worse place today mm -hmm. but based on someone's view of the world rightly or wrongly what they do in those actions and those behaviors and the words they use could actually be making stuff worse rather than better i think that's a big ongoing problem that's happening right now i think you've got lots of people who think they're making things better whereas certainly in my estimation they're making things worse, right? But to them, they may think, hey, Zuby's making things worse, mm -hmm. right? And um, obviously everybody thinks they're right. <laughs> That's right, people don't walk around thinking thinking they're wrong. Right, and that gets um, to that sort of lack of humility exactly, about that. Right? Yeah. Not, not a lot of people want to be, you know, because if you believe one of your beliefs you hold is wrong, then it's the normal thing to change yeah. that belief. Or maybe some so, of the other ones are wrong. Yeah, exactly, right? Um, Some, something, something might be wrong out there. But I think in the current climate, I do genuinely think that a lot of people who are kind of going hyper down that line, I do think a lot of it is a survival sort of mechanism. I, I think people now are starting to see, okay, this stuff is starting to get pretty, uh, like they're, 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 coming for, they're coming for people who people thought were kind of immu yeah. immune to this yeah. thing. So I think... Again, you you can either kind of just go, okay, I'm just I'm just going out of this world, or you can be like, okay, well, I'm gonna again, I'm gonna I'm gonna double down on this, and we're gonna we're gonna make sure that uh, it, again, like you, you've already alluded to it becoming some kind of secular religion. I'd I'd agree with that. Well, I would agree with that totally. Well, you see, even recently, um, <clears throat> I assume you caught this was uh, Hillary Clinton said something that sort of implied that she thought Tulsi Gabbard one of the contenders uh, was, if not a Russian agent, mm. a um, asset sort of inadvertently that was being groomed, something like yeah, that. Yeah, sure. And, uh, and I wonder, it seems like, all right, well, you expect her to say that about someone on the right, uh, the Russian assets. Mm -hmm. um, then when you see it kind of on the left, I wonder, I wonder two things. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I wonder, is that a sign that we're approaching peak craziness? But what do you think the signs, you what, what would be the signs of the peak? Ooh, that's a very good question. What would be the signs of the peak? I would say signs of the peak would be the people who are really indoctrinated into this way of thinking, coming around to, you know, doing, doing that soul searching and thinking, mm, okay, maybe we've maybe we've gone too far with this. And what would that look like from the outside though? Thing. 
Um, I have no idea. The answer yeah, sure. Well, I, I think again, I, I think either enough people need to get metaphorically taken out by this uh, circular firing squad to the point that there's nobody is. Everybody's been canceled, mm -hmm. so you need to restart. You need to start the game over again, right? And people will probably want to change the rules so that doesn't happen next time. Um, so I think either that or people kind of just again just just lifting up their heads and thinking, okay, maybe some of these ideas I'm having aren't as aren't to the scale that I believe. Maybe, maybe, maybe white supremacism isn't actually a big problem in 2019. Maybe, maybe the patriarchy isn't holding its foot down mm -hmm. on women's collective necks. Maybe the whole concept of, um, I don't know, white people being privileged just by dint of being white, maybe that's not totally right. Maybe right, just that, just that soul searching of people who really, really believe in these ideas, just to question them and observe reality. Think, hmm, maybe, maybe having biological men compete against biological women in sport. Maybe, maybe that was maybe a bad, not. May, maybe that was a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Right? You've already got people. You know, majority of people saying, yeah, that's a bad idea. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a bad idea. But for the true believers, they're like, no, it's a great idea. It's inclusive. It's a great idea. And Again, you've got to either let it sort of totally run its course mm -hmm. to the point where, okay, cool, there's no more women in women's sports, and now <laughs> oh. you can now you can restart again. Mm -hmm. Or, yeah, you, you you see certain incidents happen, and after a while, even the people, yeah, like I said, who pushed it are, okay, maybe we should roll that back because that's not going the way we expected and it I, to. I so would, to me, that's what I think peak craziness would look like. And so, sometimes people have to learn learn the hard way. Right. Sometimes that's the only people need to get burned multiple times before they realize, okay, I should stop putting my hand in the fire in that in that way. And that, that's why dialogue is important because societies need boundaries, but you need this is why you need an important dialogue between both sides of the political coin, right? The the left, the right, the, if that's how people want to traditionally split it. You need that dialogue because you do need boundaries. You've got some people who just think there shouldn't be any boundaries. Both metaphorically and physically, geographically, right? You've got people saying, there should be no countries, mm -hmm. there should be no borders, there should be you know, just total people just, you've got people are sort of on that extreme. Which, and, back to utopia, yes, that does yeah. sound nice. Uh, no, it sounds terrible. <laughs> um, but then, right to anyone practical, right? But then you've also got people on the other side, we, we need, you know, just, we want some ethno state, mm -hmm. right? And it's like, no, there's, there is a happy medium on most issues here and 98% of people are kind of somewhere in the middle. I think, okay, well, what's the right amount? Where should the boundaries be? And generally, people who tend to lean more right or lean more conservatively, again, like borders. Whereas people who tend to lean more left, more liberally, don't really like borders as much, right? They want to move the borders more. They want to expand, shift the borders around. So you need people to go, okay, sometimes the right, sometimes the borders are in the wrong place. The danger of that dialogue becoming impossible or too inflamed or too polarized is because things can't move forward in a in a decent way right there's this idea that only you know you've got a people a lot of people who are more more leftist leaning who think that okay like conservatives want to pull everything kind of back in the past and don't want don't want any change and don't want it it's like no most people again want things to be better but you know by 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 talking you you sort of move, okay okay i think that's a reasonable that's a reasonable position there, mm -hmm. okay? But that's the important debate. So if someone just tries to shut it down and prevent it from happening, then on all of these different issues, all, all the various issues, then it just becomes, it, it just becomes a, a, a mess, you know? It's like you can't, you can't get anything done. It's about the dialogue, because by definition, you cannot see your own blind spots, okay? And if you took people from those groups and you took pretty much any issue, they will be able to point out gigantic blind spots in the other people's arguments and sure. beliefs. And that's why, again, that's why you need both sides functioning. Because compassion can go wrong, too. I, I can get maybe their heart, maybe totally be in the right place, right? But I that, assume but so. That, but that person's degree of foresight mm -hmm. and sort of ability to see potential risks may not be very good. You have some people who just have very poor risk assessment. Right? Or even or, no matter how good your eyesight is, none of us can see the back of our own head. No, no, to exactly. They can then have that conversation and again, find the, 
find the right balance, which is compassionate, which is humanitarian, but which also won't ruin uh, an area or mm -hmm. a city or a, or a country or anything like that. There is there is a balance, and like you said, you can you can see when it goes you can see when it goes wrong. You can see when it goes wrong e either way. This is um, something that Douglas Murray says that I okay. think is interesting, which is that okay. in the culturally in the West, we have a mental picture of what it looks like when things get too far to the right. Mm -hmm. uh, Ethno-nationalist mm -hmm. states, uh, concentration camps, mm -hmm. but that there, according to him, there is not a similar solidified cultural idea of, well, what does it look like when the left goes too far? It looks like Soviet Russia. It looks like China. It looks like uh, Cuba under Castro. It looks like Venezuela right now. It looks like Cambodia under Pol Pot. The average person doesn't know I'd be surprised if the average person knows that far more people died under communism than died under Nazism. And th I've, I've had that exact conversation with some pr a few pretty bright friends of mine on the sure. left. And they say, ah, oh, that is preposterous. That wasn't really communism. Uh, da, da, da. <laughs> well, I know. Well, yeah. I'd say, like, well, I took their word at it. But, um. <laughs> to me, those pe people like that can be almost like the, again, some of it might just be lack of knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. But if people are aware of it, then to me, it's almost like, it's like the left-wing version of like Holocaust denial or something, right? It's like saying, mm. oh, no, that didn't... You've got college students who are going around waving hammer and sickle mm -hmm. signs or wearing a hammer and sickle t-shirt, putting it in their, their Twitter bio yeah. or whatever. And, and not being ironic about no, it. No, no, and being dead serious, right? And that's a regime that killed more people. Than, right? if, some, if you used to go to someone's profile and they've got a swastika in their Twitter bio, mm -hmm. everyone's rightly like, oosh, okay, staying away from that dude, right? Mm -hmm. But... It doesn't have this, the, the far left horrors don't have the same sting. And I think a lot of that is due to academic bias that it's not taught, right? In school, every, in school everybody right. learns about the Holocaust. Sure. Everybody learns about Nazi Germany in school. People don't learn about all those other instances I mentioned. People don't, people don't learn about it. Well, I think, I think you're right about that. Yeah.